towards the study of psychology began mainly from my own personal need to understand myself. As some of you might know, I am an 100% emotionally driven person. It can even be said that at times I have zero sense of rationality since my emotions seem to control me more than I control them. And this has always been one of my struggles. When I was younger in middle school, I would always ask myself in frustration, why am I like this? Why am I so emotionally unstable? Why does everyone seem to manage themselves so well but me? But in reality, who here can say that they honestly control each and every one of their reactions? Seriously though, have you ever yelled at someone or been very rude to someone and after it happens, felt that it was not something you would do? Have you ever been so frustrated that all you can do is cry or scream or break something or even hurt someone? So come on, raise your hand if you actually consider yourself to be in total control of everything you do, say, think, and feel all the time. Well, Ale, I certainly admire you. You must be beyond human because being totally in control of every reaction is humanly impossible. But the good news is that we can learn how to understand and deal with these emotional casualties and that is the very purpose of this TED Talk. I am going to be sharing with you guys a skill that I learned after reading quite a few books about this matter. So to begin, I would like, I would like to say that this control of the emotional is what psychologists call emotional intelligence. Personally, I believe that being emotionally intelligent is best described by Aristotle himself in the following quote. Anybody can be angry. That is easy. But to be angry with the right person, to the right degree, at the right time, for the right purpose, and in the right way, that is not within everybody's power. And believe me, it is not easy. So to begin this exploration into our inner self, Let's rewind for a second and go back in time so we can really understand where do emotions actually come from. Emotions are, in a sense, impulses that call for an action. They are instantaneous plans made by our brain to confront life. Emotions begin appearing within humans for an evolutionary cause. The term emotion is derived from the Latin word emovere, which means to move. It is additionally accompanied by the prefix e, which implies the act of moving away or retreating. Every emotion that you have has had an important role in your survival. And let me give you guys a couple examples to give an idea. When you feel anger, blood flows to your hands. And for that reason, it is easier for us to hit any person that would want to harm us. When you feel afraid, blood flows to the biggest muscles and bones like our legs. And for that reason, it is easier to run away from any threat. As you guys might know, in human prehistory, humans lived surrounded by animals. And these animals would often persecute humans. So the emotion of fear helped this human survive in these kinds of habitats. When we feel disgust, our lower lip curves onto one side and our nose wrinkles. It is interesting how Darwin affirms that this movement is made to somehow block the smells out of our nose and make us spit out any food that can be harmful to our health. So yeah, props to Charles Darwin. In brief, these emotions helped us survive back then by triggering sensations and causing action. However, it is often that these emotional responses that back then helped us survive have now become obsolete. They no longer help us confront our modern problems since they are still adapted to the urgencies we had in our prehistory. So by understanding this, I begin to understand why sometimes the way I act is not very adequate to the situation. And this this made me ask myself a bunch of other questions. I began to ask myself, well, where does exact, what exactly happens within our brains when we feel emotions? And where does it happen and how? Emotions come from the limbic system in our nervous system. The limbic system is basically the emotional part of our brain. The limbic system is composed by a variety of brain structures. But I believe one of the most interesting structures is the amygdala. When a person is in fear or is dominated by a strong 
emotion like anger, a person can do pretty irrational things, like even hurting someone. Like for example, when a person comes up to you from behind and tries to scare you, their normal reaction for you to do is to try to push them away or hit them. These reactions that at times are pretty catastrophic, they all come from the amygdala, which is the little green structure in the brain in my background. In these moments, the amygdala declares an emergency call, sending messages to each and every part of our brain, preparing our body to act. The amygdala is kind of like an alarm company, where its operators are always prepared to make emergency phone calls to the firefighters or the police officers in our brain. Now, in those moments where our emotions seem to be stronger than our reason, that is when the role of the amygdala becomes really interesting. And when all the last discoveries made about emotions, Joseph Lee Duke demonstrated how the amygdala actually has a privileged position in our brains. And because of this, it is capable of manipulating and assaulting the brain completely. And this is what psychologists call the amygdala hijack. Under normal circumstances, you see things and you hear things, and your thalamus translates those things you see and hear into brain language. The thalamus then sends out information to the thinking parts of our brain, where the information is processed. And finally, that information is sent to the amygdala, and a response is produced. Thing is that sometimes we experience a short circuit where the thinking parts of our brain are bypassed and the information is sent straight to the amygdala. That is why we do pretty crazy things when we're scared or afraid, since our human thinking and processing is literally skipped. See, through these reactions, through this knowledge, we learn that sometimes the things we do are not really our fault after all. And through, this, and through this knowledge, we learn what is really happening within ourselves and how at times we are just simply human. And that is precisely the one thing I've learned after researching a ton about emotional intelligence. The skill of being self-aware. By becoming self-aware, we understand what is really happening within ourselves and all the things that are going on in our head. To me, self-awareness consists of two things knowledge and initiative. You already have a little bit of knowledge, so the rest is up to you. By becoming self-aware, we become overall happier people, since we become much more understanding with those around us and ourselves. Now, when someone yells at you for a small, small thing or is rude to you out of nowhere, think to yourself, well, hey, maybe it's their limbic system acting up. And if you think about it this way, you don't judge people so harshly since you don't get angry so easily. And if you don't get angry so easily, you don't, you're not mean or rude to others. And by adopting this skill, this skill that requires more knowledge and less prejudice, we slowly but surely become way much more emotionally intelligent. Thank you.